Welcome to the Social Register webinar, What Does Your IT Network Have to Do With Your Word of Mouth Networking Success? And what we're going to do today is explore ways your IT network can either support or sabotage your word of mouth networking efforts. And it's, it's uh, true that, that the word network, uh, by no accident, has something to do with both your computer network and your, your um, word of mouth networking. So this is, we're gonna make some connections today. We have as our guest, Gordon Jones of Multitech. And um, Gordon is, is the owner of Multitech. It's a computer managed um, IT computer company. And he began his career as a military communications and computer technology specialist over 20 years ago and has grown his skills over the year. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's still 20, Gordon. Yes. <laughs> Gordon's grown his skills over the years to include expertise in systems integration and project management, data storage controls, networking design and optimization, including security, redundancy, and performance optimization, and communication systems, including email, VOIP, PBX, call centers, and SMS. And if you are listening and having trouble following all this um, IT jargon, um, Gordon, in the course of this webinar, is going to make it very simple for you to follow. And as I mentioned, um, it's no accident that word of mouth networking is used both for making connections at a business event and also connecting your business technology system or network. The commonality is the strategy of making and managing connections. And since both types of networking perform a similar function, it's only natural to realize that your IT network can support your word of mouth networking in some very creative and productive ways and can also sabotage your word of mouth networking. And we're gonna um, dive into that um, right now. So I want to uh, thank you, Gordon, for being yeah. present here. And it's always good to get a, an IT expert to help us delve into that area that, that um, you know, most of us, it's not in our uh, profession skills category. And so it, it's good now and then to, uh, to tune up your IT network. And so we're going to learn how to do that and how to how to make it support your uh, your word of mouth networking. So I'm gonna start with a question. Okay. Um, Gordon, why does technology need to be a part of your word of mouth networking strategy? That's a really great question, David. And thank you for the introduction. Yes, 20 years in the Marines. I did Wi-Fi <laughs> before Wi-Fi was Wi-Fi. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, by the true definition. But uh, to your question, First of all, word of mouth networking has been around forever, all right? And you go back to um, really the 60s and 70s in the true sense of marketing, um, word of mouth became more of that viral aspect of things, um, trying to create a buzz in the industry with a catchy marketing um, image or commercial or things like that. Um, and today with technology, we have morphed it into something completely different um, at a different level, I should say. Uh, and that's where us in the technology world, we're always glued to our phones and you see people always walking heads down, focused on their phones because they're always connected. Whereas before the, the market really wasn't always connected. So technology is that part, it's ingrained in us. We take it for granted now. Um, but there are a lot of layers and a lot of things to do it more efficiently and more productivity, more, more productively <laughs> um, than just taking something off the shelf, plugging it in and go. Um, so 
in my mind, that's really where technology needs to be as far as the importance of doing it right um, and having the proper tools to allow you to be efficient. Um, how many times do you hear on the phone somebody say, well, hold on a minute, I have to wait for my computer to catch up? Or you're at a networking event, hold on, my phone went to screensaver mode, let me relaunch my app. Let, let's, you know, so you, you're always there, you're always plugged in, and, and how can we try and use these really cool tools to be much more efficient in our collection of lead data or our communication of ourselves as potential vendors and customers, that customer vendor relationship. So that's kind of where I take that um, as, as a need nowadays and how can we just do it better? Okay, and it's, it's true that, that networking now is, is kind of moving from, from the face-to-face -face networking group, the traditional networking group. Mm -hmm. um, networking is also encompassing a lot of virtual networking uh, situations. And uh, we're currently on a program called Zoom, and, uh, and we're having this meeting, this webinar on Zoom. We also hold our marketing department team meetings on Zoom. So a lot of networking now happens over the computer. And as we begin to network on the computer, uh, we find that there's a demand for speed. Um, if your computer's operating slowly um, or not, you know, showing the video of the people you're uh, networking with, uh, it, can, it can be a really uh, cumbersome experience and, and actually sabotage the whole networking experience. So um, this is a case in point where technology and networking meet. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I, let me ask this question. What tools do you currently have on your computer to support your word of mouth networking? And what tools are there uh, available? What, what, what are some of the top tools that come to mind, Gordon? Sure. Um, and, and I'm going to be a little generic in my answer, but let me, let me go at it from this approach. To me, there are three main categories of tools you should be looking for um, to support your word of mouth networking. Okay? And the first is really on that lead generation or lead capture method. How can you quickly get somebody else's information into your technology environment? Okay? And secondly, um, how do you actually get that person back into a point where you're having a productive one-to-one -one type of meeting um, that you're discussing your products and services with. So how do you do that calendar follow-up, okay? And third is then taking that step one information and managing it in, in a centralized manner. A lot of people talk about that CRM and, and those different applications. But looking at that category of of having that lead collected, having it in your database as a back office type of function, and then having that application do a lot of the work for you. Um, schedule follow-up calls, schedule other communications, send emails to them as a follow-up, uh, put, put them on your newsletter lists, all of those kind of things. So to me, it's really down to three types of applications. And, and the real reason I'm not getting super specific here is there are thousands of applications to do step one, right? And what is the really right one for you? And that's where Multitech can come in and help. Um, there's free ones, there's ones that only work on Android, there's ones that only work on Mac, um, there's all sorts of different ways. But how can you collect that lead? Um, a lot of the camera applications just take a picture of their business card now, um, and that makes a record in your contact database on your phone. Okay? But is that contact database on your phone properly synchronized to step three for your CRM or your back office? So now you have them. You don't have to waste time saying, okay, now I need to synchronize this contact from where I collected it to where I need to use it. So eliminating those steps and streamlining things 
um, is really how technology and a partner like myself come into play. Um, whether you're an entrepreneur, single man shop, or a 20 man shop, and you've got five salesmen or you've got one salesman, there's a lot of different tools out there to help manage that. Um, you've heard of uh, Salesforce as a CRM, Zoho has a CRM, Bittrex, um, there's, there's thousands of them out there. Um, depending on your budget and the functionalities that you need to have to operate your business. In, in case of my point, I have one that's much more technical in nature. So it feeds all of my data automatically into this as a lead or prospect. And then I can convert them to an, a technology project and manage them in one system. And um, as well, maybe the client becomes a support client for me. So then they can communicate directly with my CRM to, to initiate support tickets. And I can respond much faster that way rather than a traditional someone calls and leaves a message. So that capability to have multiple facets of your business integrated into those three main steps um, is really key. Um, I kind of glossed over the second one a lot, but I'm finding that is really critical. And a lot more people are starting to use them now. And that's the integrated calendar apps. Um, if you embed and set up a calendar application, embed it in your signature, um, no more are you going back and forth with people wasting time. Well, what day is good for you? Oh, I'm available Tuesday and Thursday afternoon from 1 to 3 p.m. and from 4 to 5 p.m. on this day and everything else like that. It's more simply put, look at my calendar and book, appoint book an appointment. So now they can already know their schedule. You eliminate the second half of this wasted back and forth time. They can view your schedule, they can select a time, it automatically puts everything into the calendars for you, no matter what calendar application you're using on either end, and notifications are sent, reminders can be automatically sent, and being able to keep that appointment in a very timely manner and make it that productive for both parties is, I think, a real advantage to you and how you're using technology to, as a follow-up for your word of mouth networking. Okay, wow, that was a yeah. mouthful, Gordon. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna have you go back here. Sure. And, and you mentioned three steps um, that use the tools um, that are available for networking and, and definitely yeah, there three categories. are- Yeah, yeah three categories. Mm -hmm. and definitely there are so many tools based on your um, computer and phone operating system that you can't get into everything. But let's just go ahead and summarize that once again sure. using an example. Absolutely. So, so Gordon, you and I meet at a Next Generation Networking meeting mm -hmm. um, at the Fiesta Mexicana restaurant in Las Vegas. And, and give me an example of of how those you might use those three categories just in terms of one tool that that you might sure pick. so in my case david if you handed me your business card i've got an application on my phone that i use that will create a snapshot of it it'll take all the data off the card and it'll create a data record and store it for me Okay. okay, is that like phase one? That's phase one. I, I've got you now in my system. Okay, great. Okay. Um, and then from even within that system, I can immediately launch an SMS app back to yeah, that's you. A, that's a, now that's you a have text. my information. Yeah, and SMS is text. Right, so, so I'm going to send a text message directly from this application to you through my phone, and I'm going to enclose my electronic business card. Okay. All right, so now you've got an electronic version of my business card, and the format that those go to you in are very open and universal, so no matter what application is on the other end, you can view and see it, and possibly add it into your own contact database. Okay, provided I have the right tools on my computer, I, or my phone, oh, yeah. I, yeah, it goes right into my database, cool. Right. Um, and if you don't, you can still view it just like you would a traditional manual business card as if I handed you, you know, a good old paper copy, you would still have it, but now it's electronic on your phone, saved forever and ever and ever, not getting lost in the shuffle of that stack of business cards on your desk. 
So it's in yeah. my system, and, now it's in and I haven't system. even left the meeting yet. I haven't even and, left the meeting. And if I forgot my business cards, which I did on a meeting recently, um, it doesn't matter because I can still make this all happen. That's correct. So that's cool. Okay. That's correct. Um, so like I said, then I can immediately follow up with a text message to you from that. Now, I've got some other things plugged into my phone for text uh, productivity purposes where I have some canned um, responses to that. Great meeting okay. you today. Here's my, uh, here's my calendar. Let's schedule a coffee later. You know, depending on how our conversation goes as we're standing in that, uh, in that networking event, right? Um, great. Let's set a meeting and let's go over what your needs are. We discussed these things that you might need as a client, right? So That's I've got cool. various canned messages that I can immediately fire off, saving me all the typing time. The key thing, though, in that is in that SMS, that text message, is a link to my calendar. Okay, that's okay. that's really cool, and we've all received those from from people at networking events, and maybe wondered how do they do that? And wow, exactly. that's really professional. Exactly. So I think being able to drive that immediately follow up, um, you know, rather than leaving the network event, you know, and you've got this stack of cards, you know, woohoo, I'm really good, you know, and now you have to go home and you have to type them all out, you have to enter oh them into gosh, your yeah. outlook right and then you have to go through and do all these things you know that really eliminates that but still you've got now this delay of the time you got home and from the time now you're doing your follow-up your manual marketing to try and stay in, in touch with them maybe it's and a phone maybe, call maybe, maybe it's that pile. card pile is is getting larger and larger i missed the last exactly. meeting and um entering the cards into my database and now i've got you know, I, I just say, oh, what the heck? I just keep throwing them into a drawer, and pretty soon I've got hundreds of cards. And We've all done it. I still have cards I haven't entered from way back in the day. I've got <laughs> binders of cards from people oh my where a lot of this was available that I still have. Um, but, yeah, I think driving to that appointment is really critical. Continuing the communication and driving to the appointment, step two, right? Okay, Whether it's that's the coffee, one follow-up, yeah. lunch, something social, whatever. You know, you're staying engaged. Yes. And I think that's really key. Um, that's where a lot of networking fails, is that people go to the networking meeting, they make a lot of contacts, and if you don't follow up, it's almost as if you wasted that time. And Absolutely. And it's not been there. Absolutely. And, and that's one thing with my engagement with my clients on a day-to-day -day basis it's not just fix this, it's broke. It's that partnership to, to make sure the technology is engaged properly for overall office productivity. And we'll touch more on that later, but that same mentality has to go through in this process of engaging in word of mouth networking. How can I quickly, easily get the information? How can I quickly, easily send them my information? How can I quickly, easily do a calendar follow-up to get in, into their schedule? get them into my schedule. And then after the fact, behind the scenes, all of this data is synchronizing to your main CRM type of application. Um, and some businesses, they may just use Outlook because it syncs all the contacts, right? And you can create rules to do various things and whatnot, but it's about keeping that follow-up going at that point. Sending them thank you emails, sending them welcome emails, sending them um, newsletter emails, getting them on your lists to keep them engaged. The average sale process takes 17 touches before someone makes a decision or moves forward in the conversation to make a decision. Wow. 17 touches. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Your networking event thing. created one. <laughs> right. Right, so how can you utilize these tools and these, these systems to put together that path to go from one to close, depending on the engagement? Okay. Very, very good. Okay, so um, so we've got the you're utilizing the tools for networking, and now it's really becoming apparent how your IT network really does go hand in hand with your word of mouth networking and really make it successful because you've actually started a sales pipeline 
right at that networking event and you're managing people through that pipeline through all the touches so awesome gordon thank you yep okay another question is how can you manage your connections robustly through email tools <laughs> this this topic here has morphed incredibly in the last 12 months i mean in that short of a time it's unfortunate, but most people get so many emails in a day that they cannot properly pay attention to or respond to those emails. Absolutely. Okay. They're flooded with this. Um, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you are getting in front of them in this mainstream type media that's very easy to use. Okay. Um, so de there again, depending on the type of business, depending on the type of, of client that you are, um, and business that you run, um, there's a lot of different things that you can utilize, um, from the basics within something everybody pretty much knows about Microsoft Outlook. Okay. Um, within Outlook, most people only touch probably 30% of the capabilities within Outlook. Wow. Right? Um, yes, they received an email, they read it and they maybe filed it to someplace for a future follow-up or they deleted it. <laughs> okay. They wrote an email and it's in their sent folder, right? Um, and gone. <laughs> and gone, you know, and, and forgotten. Um, so to help manage that barrage of incoming communications and those connections, um, setting up rules and filters so you can more effectively hit those high target topics or people that you want to focus on. Um, that's one approach. Um, so looking at maybe how to categorize the contact is really key. Uh, everybody's familiar with tagging something, mm -hmm. right? Um, but most mail programs create categories and tags okay. as well to do things what, with. What's the so, difference between a category and a tag? It's really is how it's used in the system in the background. Okay. okay. Um, some third party mail applications to manage your newsletters with, um, you may want to have them as a lead category, but the tag may be, I met them at social register. Okay. So it's a way to filter and look at things. Right. Um, and then you can follow up and create custom, um, email campaigns, maybe a week before the next social register event saying, Hey, it was great meeting you last month. I look forward to meeting you at the next meeting, you know, and you're sending it to just those at the social register tag filter. Okay. Right. Um, and then every month you're sending a newsletter to everybody in your entire list. Right. So you have a newsletter list. Um, maybe you have a client list separate to that. Maybe there's duplicate entries in both because you can have clients in a newsletter and clients as separate communications, right? So maybe I want to announce a new product or feature to my existing clients that okay. can help them save money and improve productivity and keep their data more secure. Um, and those kind of things that we partnered with to help them through the process of, of you utilizing technology more efficiently. So, how do you get that contact into the email tool is key from the last conversation. How can we then find them again quickly to use these various email programs to keep connected? Right. Um, and then possibly even how can you merge that information into other applications that you may want to use? Um, so there's, there's all sorts of different things and there's no cut and dry answer. You're going to hear me say that a lot. There's, there's no perfect puzzle piece of an answer that covers all technology points. Um, it's really unique to who and how they're using it or how they need to use it. What is their end goal to get out of that technology to use it properly and more, more efficiently? Okay. So in a way to summarize, I would say that, there's, you know, it's important to go out there and network and networking meetings. The one thing that's even more important is to choose a networking group or organization and network consistently. Absolutely. One thing more important than that is to do the kind of follow-up 
Gordon's talking about, have one-to-ones, um, have some kind of a drip campaign just to keep top of mind um, to the people that you've met. And um, these things, um, Gordon's talking about establishing and automating so that, you know, there's, there are so many demands on our time. And when we look at our email inbox, especially, it can be very confusing. It can be overwhelming. And, and Gordon's talking about organizing that, automating it, so that we keep a consistent follow-up on the networking we're doing. And that consistency then results in uh, in growing relationships and the growing relationships are going to result in business opportunity. So um, that's the, that's kind of the, the technology behind making all this happen. And I can see where, you know, a lot of us, when we think of networking, the word guilt comes to mind. And guilt is for the meetings we've missed, it's for the data we haven't entered into our, um, into our CRM contact management um, programs. It's for the one-to-ones that we never followed up with and, and arranged. And then it's for all those people that, that we've met that could have been a relationship, but we stopped at the second or maybe third touch if we're heroes and never got to the 17th touch that Gordon's talking about. So um, there's a lot of guilt when it comes to networking. And, you know, it's, it's, it can be a massive uh, obligation or, or you know, project to, to really do networking right. And so you need everything on your side possible. And this automation Gordon's talking about is something that just really streamlines the whole process so that the goal that we had when we network actually can become uh, accomplished. So, okay. So let, let me just add one other point, on, David, too. Um, and a quick story example. I've got two or three clients I can think of right off the top of my head that easily have over 3,000 emails and above inside their inboxes. Wow. Us as technology people, business people, whatever, it's, very, it's, a, it's a very short path for us to, well, let me send him an email, boom, 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 and send him an email. Mm -hmm. You think you've communicated to them, but now you're a 3,001 in yeah. the inbox. Yep. So these integrations are very, very helpful, yes, but it doesn't eliminate that real touch. I'm finding myself more and more I may respond to an issue to a client. I send them an email, right? Everything is documented. I have my proof. Boom, boom. It goes out to them. But I still need to consciously make that effort. Call the client. Did you get my email? Here's my answer. You know, I responded to you. <laughs> yes. Pick up the phone. <laughs> Another example. Um, let's take insurance agents, for instance. Yes. Very good at communicating electronically. Newsletters, products. Everything goes out all the time. Real estate agents as well. But now you're just adding to that electronic overload of this receiving person's inbox. So nothing, yes. a good successful agent, real estate or insurance, doesn't matter, is always there. Let me do my monthly follow-ups to my clients. Hey, 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 you know, stay in front of mind. I wanted to key on that point you said, stay in front of mind. Um, yes. That's very, very critical. We can't okay. take it for granted. Yes, we got the cool things, but we can't take it for granted. Okay. Well, now all this technology and communication and, and back and forth with, with the people we've met brings up another question. As you're going to websites, as you're emailing, uh, how do you keep your network secure? Because every touch that you make is, and you multiply that 3,000 by 17, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a lot of touches. Yeah. And each of those touches then can open your computer to a virus, which can bring your whole system down. So you know, yes. how, how can you take care of that? 
Well, one thing, well, one of our main product focuses at Multitech is the antivirus, anti-phishing, anti-spam, um, all those kind of things that help open security holes within your computer, within your phone, and your network as those are sitting. So right now, yes, I'm in my office. I have my phone. It's doing things. My computer's doing things, right? It's all connected to my wireless network. Um, if you're out and about doing your networking, now your phone is at some strange Wi-Fi connection or maybe mm -hmm. using the cell phone towers and things like that. And you're exchanging data and information very freely and openly. But if you don't have the right security layers of things put onto your devices across the board, phones, tablets, computers, everything like that, you bring that home and uh, back into your home office, your work office, uh, now you're exposing that information to attack. Um, so we have some very, very high-tech type tools that we use. Um, fortunately, though, it's very, very low cost. <laughs> and it's like the very first layer of defense um, for as little as 50 cents a day, protecting that computer and any and all communications that go through that in a very proactive um, in a, in a method of, 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 of screening and protecting your information. Um, so you can have some applications out there, they're very economical, they may be free, but they're very reactive. They wait for an alert to happen, or they wait mm. for a problem to happen. Okay. Okay? And then now you say, well, wait, I can't open this file or do anything, or, or it's too late. The file opened, and it didn't scrub properly, it didn't protect it properly, and so now I have to deal with cleaning and closing windows and doing all this stuff. Um, when it comes to virus software, um, more and more applications are becoming more cloud-based in their, in their intelligence of handling um, various things. A lot of them, though, are still very old school. You have to wait to get that update of the next virus definition file, right? And, and that's on you as the computer user to make sure you're up to date. Mm. But even then, if a virus is discovered at noon today in the world of cloud IT stuff, right? And oh my gosh, there's a new virus out on the market, right? Yes. Uh, the reactive way is, okay, well, let's write a method. Let's write a piece of code that can help block that virus from happening. Okay, great. We've tested it. We Now it's ready. Now let's push that to all of our users who are using our software. So now you have a pending update to update your virus definition code. Mm. Now you're four, six, eight, 12 hours from the time it was infected. Okay. Right? And still, if you don't update it, you're now three, four, five, seven days down the road before you're updated. So you're exposed wow. and, and, and vulnerable to these kind of attacks. Using the proactive tools like we promote for our clients, they detect the virus and using artificial intelligence and things like that, your computer is instantly ready and aware for this virus to happen on your computer. Okay. So, um would you say that's one of the main differences between the the type of security you install on computers and maybe if somebody got an out of the box absolutely online program like Norton McAfee? Yeah, not not to name names, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, but at the same time, how do these applications integrate and work with your computer? Okay. Um, I'm sure most people that may end up watching this have experienced from some time they try to install a new piece of software and it says, we're going to have to shut your virus software off momentarily while we install this software. Mm, okay. Right? Because yeah. your virus software may be too, too heavily aggressive on your computer to allow your computer to operate properly and seamlessly. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, wait, I can't open this file. It all has to scan and I have to wait because the virus software has to jump through and do things. Yes. The virus software is getting an update. You have to wait. A little hourglass is ticking across your screen while it updates the virus definition file right in the middle of your day. Um, with these types of things, we eliminate those pauses and those, those methods. But at the same time, the software that we promote and use also integrates into your web browser. Okay. okay. So whether you're using Chrome, Firefox, Safari, 
Internet Explorer, doesn't matter. It can integrate into that browser. So as you're visiting various websites that you know are good, that's fine. But if you happen to click on something on that website that takes you to a site that it has a bad reputation, then the software will pause, prompt, and guide you on whether you need to continue down that path or not. Uh, that's interesting. I had an experience like that this morning. I went to a website, <laughs> and um, and as soon as I opened a page, I I hear a little bell on my computer, and and then it says uh, it it's it's saying it's Microsoft Security, and it's saying that three viruses have been detected on my computer. And I, I closed everything rather than, you know, hit the buttons, you know, that, that were uh, popping up on my computer saying you need to hit these buttons in order to resolve this issue. And that brings up the whole, uh, the whole subject of, of ransomware where, uh, where you have, you know, some entity out there that says it's going to help protect you from a virus and and it makes it look like your computer is shut down and you need to pay for their um, service in order to get your computer back. Right. And, and there's another layer on that too, David, that a lot of people aren't really aware of. And, and that has to do with some non-malicious um, malware. And what I mean by that is not in your face causing problems, mm -hmm. right? But it's in the background causing problems. Okay. You may be running small little programs in the background that eats up all your memory resources or causes delay in videos to be presented. Um, and, and it's unbeknownst to you. It's just a nuisance thing. Most clients that we engage with, as we go in and we do a review, clean and scrub on their systems, yes. we easily find these kind of things just sitting in the background, buried inside of Microsoft, um, that it's not really, like I said, a danger, it's just a nuisance. Okay. But there again, when we're done with those systems and we hand them back over to the clients, okay, now I'll go ahead and restart and log in, they're like, holy smokes, it launched so much faster. Well, that's kind of interesting because uh, sometimes when I think of security, computer security programs, I think, oh, these are going to slow my computer down. But what you're saying is that the, the kind of uh, security you're talking about actually speeds things up for because you. Because it gets rid of things that you don't know is there in, in okay. part of our review and cleanup of your systems. Okay. Okay. Right? So there's, there's things that we can help optimize and find. I had one client, we walked in his door, they had one computer, computer that had over 1,500 various little minor infections in, the, in their system register. Oh my gosh, yeah, and, yeah. You know, we went in and purged all out and cleaned up and things. And this, like I said, it's just little tiny things you don't know about. Yeah, little and, increments. <laughs> little increments, and it eats away at time. And you know, geez, I just bought this computer. Why is it so slow? Well, it yeah. needs to be optimized for what you use it for, and then it needs to be secured properly, mm -hmm. right? So we really look at those seamless methods, okay? And another topic on this from a security standpoint, um, there again, depending on your industry, um, there's the concept of a VPN, and that's a virtual private network. Okay. Okay. More and more companies are now advertising on television media for these kinds of services. And, and they're very good services. The technology has grown tremendously over the last decade when it comes to mm. VPNs. Okay. Um, VPNs were really the most highly secure aspect of your computer talking to another computer on the internet or another Ooh. website on the internet. Okay. Um, and that basically it creates, instead of you going out through your internet connection, Cox, CenturyLink, whoever, doesn't matter, you know, you go out into the internet, you're in the cloud, and now you're talking to another computer, right? There's all these pathways that your data is exposed on. Okay. Between point A and point B, right? So like from your home in Las Vegas, you go to a, a central hub in Las Vegas, which hops to a hub in Denver, which hops to Atlanta to get to a website that's hosted in New York. Right? Okay. So all those hops, 
your data is there, right? And wow. not, not really secure. Okay. okay. It is to a degree when there's semantics on this, but creating a VPN or a private secure tunnel that your data is only encapsulated in this little tunnel, yes, they go through those hops, but there's all these other layers of encryption that are on top of it that doesn't allow you to be exposed, right? Perfect example, you go to a Starbucks and you open up your, desk, your laptop and you start working. You're using a public network. Everybody else that is around there can effectively see your data. But if you launch a VPN from your computer, yes, you're on that channel, but it's so encrypted, they can't really see you there. Okay. Okay. Same thing with your phones. This is our weakest point. Yes. Right? Because most phones nowadays are probably more powerful than most laptops nowadays. Mm. Okay. And you're out and about, you're doing your word of mouth, you're going to networking events, you're managing all this stuff, right? So all of that data, there's ways and needs um, that you could possibly need to think about having a VPN. It's not needed for everybody, but it might be. It kind of depends on the industry that you work on. Sure. Yeah. I imagine if you have a confidentiality situation, yes. like an attorney or a physician. A, a medical office. Uh, yeah, yeah. I had a medical office. One of the remote employees does billing and things like that. Yes. Submitted a support ticket. I can't stay connected to the internet. Well, come to find out, she had taken her laptop from her secure home network to the Starbucks down the street uh, and did not have a VPN running. So therefore, HIPAA violations were red flags all over. So implemented wow. policies and procedures to make sure remote employees are utilizing a VPN yes. to properly connect to the cloud-based application that they use for all their medical billing information. Very good. So. Okay. Well, let's, let's move on to the next question. This, this was security definitely mm -hmm. is, is an important one. Um, so how do you avoid communication overload? Yeah. Well, we kind of naturally touched on this a little bit earlier when it came yes. to you know, communications through emails. Um, but that is really getting yourself focused on what is important for your day-to-day -day business. I mean, you could sit there and answer emails 20 hours a day and read everything that comes into your inbox, right? But do you really need to? Mm. Probably not. You know, do you need to make sure that Groupon email that came in for the coupon do you need to read that right now because it came into your box? No. Uh, no. File that away to look at on Friday night to decide what you're going to do for the weekend. Okay. <laughs> right? So, so it's, you it's, can it's automate really about that. managing those resources yeah. more efficiently to your flow of business. Okay. So you can, you can create an automated way where those automatically go into a folder when they're received. And, and then all you have to do when you do your email, you don't just go into your inbox with this conglomeration of emails, but you go to separate folders, the ones that you decide are, are important to, to read at exactly. a particular time. Exactly. Okay. Very good. Okay, so um, do you have any tips for managing your schedule so that you're always aware of upcoming appointments? You know, how many of us have missed an appointment because uh, we just, we just missed it. We, we didn't have it on our calendar. We, it happens, even yeah, to the best say, of us. Yeah. So what, what do you suggest, Gordon? I mean, we're all guilty of it, and it will all happen. There is no perfect band-aid for this. I mean, I'm in technology, and it happens to me from time to time because I was a very important meeting in the morning. My ringer was off, right? And throughout the day, my phone may have been upside down or in my bag, right? And it beeps that I have a reminder, but if I didn't physically see it because the ringer's off, I would have forgotten all about it. Our mind is going a million miles a minute. We're constantly looking at all these various things. Um, what I found really works for me, in addition to what I mentioned earlier when you're talking about calendar stuff, is using an app like that helps build enhanced reminder systems for mm -hmm. you. It's not just a beep, you have an appointment 15 minutes before. Right? By default, most calendar programs could set a reminder. And by default, most of them are 15 minutes before the meeting. Right. Right. <laughs> and um, you got to travel 45 minutes and, and you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. And then again, if your ringer's off, you don't hear the beep. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so a lot of these calendar apps 
you can layer in other ways to help communicate to you that you have appointments coming up. Mm. It is not just to you, but to who may be on the flip side of that appointment. Okay, right? very good. They'll send an SMS reminder or an email reminder the day before. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at noon. That's great right. because that's the flip side of, of, um, of scheduling issues is that you show up at the appointed time and place and you're just sitting there and you've got a no-show right it's, and you drove it's, however many miles and you wasted however much exactly. time and you're saying that you could avoid this absolutely um a lot of professional offices utilize this technology with their client appointments dentist office is a perfect example okay very high tech high touch right you leave the office you set the appointment Right. If you're really good, you add it to your calendar yourself as you're leaving, <laughs> leaving the office. Right. Yes. <laughs> but at the same time, they'll send you an email. Great for the visit today. We have your next appointment six months from now. Boom. It's in your email. Yes. Right. Three months beforehand, you'll get another little reminder email. Right. Seven days before the appointment, I get text messages from my dentist office just confirming our appointment next week. Please, please press one to confirm that you will be there. So not only yeah. are they trying to ensure that their calendar is constantly full and people show up, but they're also giving them the opportunity like, oh, crud, Monday doesn't work for me anymore. Let me reschedule it now rather than that 12 hours before you realize you have an appointment and now you have to pay, you know, fees, rescheduling fees and things like that. So they're really trying to incorporate all these kind of technology tools to help their business flow with their clients and keep their calendar full and financially productive for them. Yeah, and you know, as a business, from the business end, if you can imagine 20 to 30% of your meetings not working out or needing to be rescheduled, mm -hmm. and, and then you've got those blank um, positions on your, your calendar, you're talking about taking a 20 to 30% cut in income. Yep. And <laughs> that's, that could be pretty. That, that pretty could be devastating. Yeah. yeah. And one is not just to cut an income, but now you're paying employees to sit around that would have been working on patients and not doing anything. Yeah. So you have lost, you have lost money, a soft loss in the background too. Okay. Well, here's another question. Um, uh, talk, tell us about conferencing over the phone and using web applications. And then we're, we're talking about saving even more time, saving travel time. Yeah. So, um, how, how can technology help us to network uh, without being physically present? Um, and it's more and more take it for granted on this one as well. Um, it's much more accepted for us to do a conference call or a WebEx type of, or a Zoom like we're doing right now with customers, then it is the need to actually physically show up at somebody's office to discuss the same thing. Yes, okay? absolutely. Uh, I have quite a lot of professional relationships in the Valley here that they will primarily, 90% of the business, they will only do Zoom conference calls for meetings. Okay. Right? Um, I wish I could do more of that. And in, in my case, physically looking and touching equipment is a little bit more paramount. So I have to go to these people's offices. So now in my 20 to 45 minute commute to various things, rather than sitting there and doing nothing, I could take advantage of that and have a conference call with somebody or just a, a meeting call with somebody. You know, it doesn't have to be video based. Um, our phones are very adept at, at doing a phone call and then conferencing and adding in um, people into the call as they need to be. Um, it's very, very, you know, the voice recognition software capabilities nowadays is just incredible. Um, but partnering with a technology tool that fits your office needs, um, a lot of traditional telephone systems would give you a conference call capability. Um, now with technology, uh, you mentioned the VOIP, the VOIP, uh, that, which is voice over internet 
Um, basically, that technology, having a VoIP phone system and the capability to do a video conference embedded into the VoIP software is a very natural thing. And you can have a lot of cost savings by looking at some of these technologies than more traditional phone systems that are still out there. Okay. So, um, partnering with a company like Zoom or GoToMeeting or WebEx um, or Uber Conference. I mean, there's, there's tons of them out there. Um, it's finding the right fit for your productivity. Um, a lot of them have costs associated to it. Some of them are free. Google Hangouts and things like that. You know, there's, there's different levels of, of uh, call capabilities. Even Zoom has a free application, but you only can have a shorter call, you know, and you only can have a limited number of people on it. And that may be perfect for your business. Okay. Right? So, yeah, I can see then with your, the scheduling uh, that you spoke about, we were talking about saving maybe 30% of your, your time and in, mm -hmm. in not missing appointments. And now with this, you, maybe you gain another 30% by um, eliminating travel or making tra being able to communicate during your travel. So exactly. um, that's, that's how the, the sales rep, for, for example, one rep might be able to make twice as many uh, connections as another rep and it results in in potentially twice as many uh, twice as many deals closed. So that's that's a, a pretty awesome thing. Absolutely. Okay, okay another uh, question, final question I've got is um, talk to us about advanced web-based communication and project management tools for um, for the, the contractor, whether it be a, a web designer, a marketing uh, person, any, any kind of contract work where you're bringing a number of people into a project, uh, managing the project. Absolutely. And, you know, seamlessly and smoothly is, is just really vital. It's the difference between success and and disaster <laughs> yeah sure can be yeah um and just like every other tool and concept we've talked about before there are a lot on the marketplace a lot of them um, i was actually introduced to a new one this morning from uh, an associate of mine that he likes to use um so i'm checking that out um but from my perspective i have three or four that i kind of keep in my back pocket um depending on the size and scope of the project um, it may just be simple task management. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a very simplistic form, my wife and I use OneNote as task management. She's busy doing her things. I'm busy doing my things. But we still both as a family have stuff we have to get done. Yes. Now, where's that list of things to do? <laughs> Everybody can associate themselves. Okay, Saturday, here's my list. <laughs> right. well, <How> do you <laughs> I don't carry a pad of paper around anymore, crossing them off. It's all in my phone, on my OneNote. She has the opportunity to add, don't forget to buy this at this store or whatever. I can say, don't forget to drop this off at this place. You know, So that simple way of, of melding tasks and that list of stuff is, is the core concept for a lot of these tools. Um, a lot of them really go to the point of pure project management, Gantt charts, everything, you know, um, milestones, must have buys, all these project management type tools uh, that I've been using for years and years and years. Some projects don't warrant that. It could be a simple conversation, identifying three or four things that need to get done, who the three or four people are that need to get them done, and their verbal commitment on when they want it done. Now you have a list, mm. right? But at the same time, these tools have morphed to such a powerful concept that Within the tool itself, hey, where are you at with this? You know, I didn't see an update that you had due on Monday. Today's Tuesday. Give okay. me an update so I help, can help communicate to the team without having to actually physically talk to somebody. But the tool itself is integrated in all these communication aspects um, and scheduling and following up and, and attaching documents to them as well. Um, here's, here's, some, here's my draft of this. Boom. So now you have that collaborative effort where everybody on the team can see the draft document, provide their individual inputs so that you can finish your goal by Friday, which is due by. So yeah, there are a lot of them out there. 
Yeah, yeah. Gordon is actually helping the marketing department, LV, um, with collaborative tools. And we have 14 marketing professionals in everything from uh, marketing strategy to web design, graphic art, uh, social media, uh, photography, videography. Uh, we've, we've got so many different disciplines when we're working with a client. Uh, you get multiple people working on a project and you absolutely have to have some kind of organized project management or things can spin out of control so fast that, that your head will be spinning. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Okay. Well, Gordon, I want to thank you for, for being with us. I hope that um, those who have participated, you, know, you, you may want to go back and view the recording. We will have the recording of this webinar on the networklasvegas.com website. And you just scroll down to the bottom of the home page and you'll see this recording. It'll probably take a couple days to, to get it up. But there's, this is so packed with information, Gordon. I, I don't think I... I've we ever, haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg yet. <laughs> I don't think I've ever received such an information uh, dump in, in, in such a short time. And this is, this is truly valuable. I want to thank you, Gordon. Thank you. And I hope everyone that's, that's listening here can benefit from this. Uh, watch the video slowly. Go back and, and um, write down some things that, you know, turn, turn some of the things Gordon's spoken about into goals. Contact Gordon. Um, for, for those of you that are watching and want to reach out to me, I'm sure Dave will have my contact information. But because of this webinar, I've got some specials that I, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about, some from a security audit, from an overall IT perspective, just information gathering and, and advice type specials that uh, we can look forward to helping you guys out. Awesome. Well, we call these in the marketing department, we call these kickstart specials. And the reason for these is because some of these areas like IT are so huge, you don't know where to start, but it's important just to get some momentum started. And that's what Gordon's talking about. He'll come in, uh, even an evaluation, at least you're doing something. And Gordon will help identify uh, some of the low hanging fruit that can make a huge difference. What gets you the most bang for your, for your buck or your effort. And, and, and so you get some momentum going. So that's, that's awesome. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, this concludes our webinar on your IT network and networking. And, and there's no way you could listen to this webinar and not know that there is a huge, uh, correspondence between your IT network and the success of your word of mouth networking. So thank you so much for this, Gordon. You betcha. Thanks. Okay. Bye for now. All right. Bye-bye.